Good afternoon, it's three o'clock, and we'll call the Oklahoma City Metropolitan Area Public Schools Trust to order. The first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the March 4th, 2014 Oklahoma City Metropolitan Area Public Schools Trust meeting. May I have a motion, please? So moved. So second? Second. We'll vote. Motion passes. The next item on the agenda is the suburban school district application for funding, and this is to approve application for funding for Mustang Public School District property purchase 120 West Foster Drive, $95,000. Mr. Todd. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. This is an application by Mustang Schools, as you said, and it is the, the usual process that we've gone through for the, the MAP suburban district uh, projects. They, they've file a, a, an application and we determine that it meets qualifications of the MOU and we are sending that to you today for approval. Are there any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve, please. So moved. Is there a second? Second. The vote. Motion passes. The next item on the agenda is our financial reports, uh, A, B, and C, A being to approve the Oklahoma City Metropolitan Area Public Schools Trust Revenue and Obligation Report for January 2014. Mr. Todd? You have in your packet, as you said, the uh, financial reports, uh, A, B, and C. A is to approve the uh, Trust Revenue and Obligation Report for January 2014, B being the Trust Revenue and Obligation Report for February 2014, and C, ratify Oklahoma City Metropolitan Area Public Schools Trust Payments. They're in their usual form, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Oops, I'm holding before I can vote. Are there any questions? If not, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve all three. I'll make a motion to approve all three reports. Is there a second? Second. Now we can vote. There we go. Motion passes. The next item on the agenda, we have some change orders. We'll go through these one at a time. There's change order uh, letter A to approve change order number 11 for Columbus at Jackson School. This is an increase of 23,909.47, Project ES0067. Mr. Todd? Thank you. Uh, this is uh, change order 11 for Columbus at Jackson School. You've seen this one a, a lot here, and this is an old school that's, that's got a lot of issues. And I'll go through the significant items here. Items um, one and two are actually items that are being removed from the project so that, that uh, we can do item number three, which seemed much more crucial. So item one is, is a, a flooring credit, um, and that will be done under a separate contract. We'll come back and do that later, but we're taking it out of this project because we're running real close to our 10% limit on change orders. And item two is some playground equipment, which has been purchased, but the installation cost is the, the credit you see here. So as I said, that goes into item three, which is some um, asbestos abatement and additional floor preparation that was required for the new flooring. Then continuing on, uh, item four is voids in the plaster, and the chalkboards were removed. It either pulled off plaster or plaster from previous uh, demolition was back behind there, so this fixes those spots. Item five is $7,581. This is for new power and data outlets that are rerouted to accommodate some of these chalkboards. And then moving on to item seven, we've run into this in several locations, is the old building was made from, from clay tiles, which is like clay block. They didn't use concrete blocks. And as we do demolition or cut in doors, we find that they're very unstable. So this was some uh, money to re repair that wall. That's all I have. Do you have any questions? Are there any questions on that one? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. For vote. Motion passes. The next item is to approve change order. Number seven for Taft Middle School. This is an increase of 166,946. This is Project ES0070. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Madam Vice Chairman. There are several items on here, and I'll hit the, the significant items. Uh, item one, $7,244 is for uh, an existing urinal that is cracked, and, and, and some of these conditions are conditions that when they were first looked at 
for uh, design and, and certainly for program issues weren't there, but as we know, the schools continue to be used in that interim, and, and some of these things happen. So <clears throat> there was a, a urinal that was cracked, and then as we got in there and, and did that, there were seven new hot water mixing valves that needed to be replaced. Moving on to item three, this is a school district request. Computer stations in the library will be relocated. So <clears throat> there are some power and data outlet modifications for $4,274. Item four is, uh, again, a clay tile wall issue in the kitchen, $6,424. Item eight is classroom revisions, $39,274. The, the kiln it will be relocated into that existing storage room, and, and this is to, to widen the doors in that specified space, as, as your item says. And then also in the counselor's office and health clinic, they were redesigned to accommodate a structural beam that was, was found during demolition. Sometimes these roof beams protrude and they're hidden by various soffits and things. And when you take out the soffit, you find these, these beams that can't be moved because they're holding the roof up. Um, item 10 is a school district request for new heat exchanger. Um, item 11 is additional marker and tack boards due to program changes. These are added. Item 12 is light deflectors in the ceiling lights, and then uh, that, that relates back to the credit that we, we see on item 14 of $14,669. Those are connected. And then there's a skylight credit. The uh, skylights were scheduled to be removed, but they were just sealed, so we got a credit of $3,785. That's it. Are there any questions? On the heat exchanger, is this um, something where it's pretty much on its last leg, or is it a new system? Can you explain a little bit more? Well, it's, it's one of those situations where we run into that something needs to be done, and, and we have the money here towards the end of the project, and I'm, I'm sure it was on its, on its last leg, so we were able to, to replace it. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we'll vote. Motion passes. The next change order is to approve change order number eight for Webster <coughs> Middle School increase of $111,000, I don't like how that sounds. Uh, project ES0069. <laughs> Mr. Todd. <laughs> Madam Vice Chair, there's seven or eight items on this change order. And again, I'll, I'll hit the more significant ones. Item two is a, a delay claim for $52,493. There was 95 days added to this for some additional flooring abatement that was done by annual contract. Then um, item three, $11,236. When the floors are removed in some of these, either the, the glue sticks and, and damages the floor, or we find that there were several floors. But anyway, the, the floors are uneven, so we have to go in and, and even these floors up. So. This is a floor preparation, but it's really just leveling of the floor, $11,236. And then there's a, item five is art room conversion. The school district repurposed the art room into computer tech, so this is for uh, adding the data drops and electrical receptacles for 30507 And item seven is wall revisions to add a chase that was behind some drinking fountains for $7,560. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Um, this item of the delay of 95 days is of a concern to me. And again, we, we've had this in a lot of the, the, the buildings, but it seems to me as if this is something that the architect should have been charged with finding in advance of the project. Um, and, and I'm not going to point out this one because we've had several that we've already approved with the same uneven floors, um, asbestos underneath the floor problem in a lot of the buildings, so I'm not going to try to stop this one, but I would just say that this should be a lesson learned as we go forward. And if we do this sort of, I don't know, map still will ever happen again in our lifetimes, but if it does, to me this is something we should be charging the architects for doing some sort of a core sampling or something on the floors to find out what we're getting into when they come up. I understand, and, and just in response to that, sometimes these floors, you know, some of these schools date back to 1920 or so, and, and they've got several layers of flooring on there, and, 
and some of the, the old asbestos tile might be buried underneath another tile floor and under a wood floor or under carpet or something like that. So we do the best that we can to try and identify asbestos within the building and exposed tiles. We certainly sample those. But sometimes, like I said, they're buried so deep that we don't know they're there until we start demo. And once the contractor finds them, he has to stop. And then we have to put together a contract and, and get them. Well, first we have to get it tested to make sure that it does or doesn't have asbestos. And then we have to go through that whole process and, and as you know asbestos cleanup takes a long time so unfortunately that's why we do run into these delays sometimes. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? If not I'll entertain a motion please. <coughs> Move approval. Is there second. a second? Okay. We'll vote. Motion passes. The next item on the agenda is the joint resolution between Independent School District Number 89 of Oklahoma County, Oklahoma, the Oklahoma City Metropolitan Area Public Schools Trust, and the City of Oklahoma City in declaring the expenditure of OC Maps revenues to fund the I-89 School District Administration Building Project, which is necessary and appropriate, declaring the expenditure of OC Maps revenues. <coughs> to fund the I-89 School District Administration Building Project is in accordance with the purpose and expenditure set forth in Section 52-23-2C of the Oklahoma City Municipal Code 2010 and authorizing the expenditure of $2,325,000 plus closing costs <coughs> excuse me, of OC MAPS revenues to fund the I-89 School District Administration Building Project. Six, six, 15 North Class and Boulevard, Project ES0036. <coughs> Mr. Todd, you want to walk us through all that? Yes, ma'am. As you know, there's, there's been a lot of attempts to, to find an, a new administration building after it was determined that remodeling of the existing building was, was really uh, just beyond our budget. So started, the district started looking at, at other buildings, and, and we've looked at a, a couple and, and were unsuccessful on one, and, and the other one just didn't seem to work out. But, they did identify this building. I think it's going to work out great. Um, the district is going to re redo their allocation of personnel, so they'll have a few less people at this building. So that's why it's a little maybe smaller than what you expected. But we think this is a great building for them. Um, Mr. Lopez is here to answer any questions you might have from, from their standpoint. But we're very happy to, to have this building uh, identified and, and purchase this for the new administration building. Thank you. Questions? Yes, sir. I didn't read the purchase and sale contract in detail, but I'm wondering if, if it includes, and this may be a question for council, but I'm wondering if it includes um, the discussed donation of the adjacent um, parking lot to the south. Mr. Lopez. Yes, Mr. Francisco, it does include it. Uh, the donor and the seller of the property uh, wanted to complete his one transaction and we closed at one o'clock this afternoon I'm glad to say so that mm -hmm. gift of that uh, what had been formerly the drive-through area of the bank is now property of the school district so uh, as we're saying and uh, is that uh, we bought a building and the donors gave us a campus so we're mm -hmm. very grateful congratulations thank you any other questions if not I'll entertain a motion for approval please so moved. Okay, and that's a move and a second. We'll vote. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, item seven, is to approve reimbursement agreement with Coxcom LLC line relocation for John W. Rex mm -hmm. Elementary School, estimated cost of $19,245.96. This is project ES0035. Mr. Todd? Thank you, Madam Vice Chairman. This is the John Rex Elementary, the new downtown elementary. This is a, a uh, Cox Communications line that was in an easement, and uh, we agreed previously, I believe, that we would uh, reimburse them for, for costs to relocate this after the, they got the costs for what it actually, I need to start over, the actual costs of what it cost them to move this. So here we have the, the agreement to reimburse them for $19,245. Questions? Not. Will I entertain a motion to approve, please? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. We'll vote. Motion passes. 
Item 8, concurrent items. Uh, item 8-8 is the concurrence with Independent School District number 89 in approving change order number 3, I-89-2007 school bond issue project. This is S-7003, classrooms and gymnasiums at Parmalee, Hillcrest, and Pierce Elementary Schools. This is an increase of $2,236. Mr. Todd? Madam Vice Chair, as you said, this is from the bond projects that we are administrating through our office. <clears throat> there are three items on this change order, and uh, the first one is a credit for an existing uh, irrigation system that was on the project, and then item two is a roof and wall revision at the interface between the, the new construction and the old construction. There was concern that there might be some ponding of water, so this was to, to modify some wall detail and some roofing to make sure that that water sheds away from it. So that was $5,591. Questions? Not may I have a motion, please? Moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we'll vote. Motion passes. 8A eight, eight is the con concurrence with Independent School District number 89 in approving change order number 4, I-89-2007 school bond issue project S-70012. This is for TAS Stadium re re renovation, increase of 92000 $61.24. Mr. Todd? <clears throat> Thank you. This is, as you said, Taft Stadium renovation. And um, Taft Stadium has been there for many, many years. So you can imagine that the things that we run into out there. So as it says in, in item one, that there needed to be new structural steel supports to uh, support that WPA wall, the, the, when we say the WPA wall, the sandstone wall that's along the east side. I think everybody knows what that is. <clears throat> Item two was a school district request that we use metal panels on the press box um, instead of, uh, I believe we were using, it was actually a, a metal panel, but this is a better metal panel, a little more attractive. Um, Item three is for some uh, fire line and water line relocations on that project. So I'll be glad to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Not. We'll entertain a motion for approval, please. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. We'll vote. All right. Motion, motion passes. Mr. Clowers, give us <clears throat> an update, please. Sure, Madam Chair, the Vice Chairman. Uh, there are still uh, 10 schools in construction. Um, two of these are high schools, Northeast Academy and Northwest Classen High Schools. Both are substantially complete and uh, will be recommended for final acceptance very soon. Uh, three others, Webster, Taft, and Roosevelt Middle Schools are nearing completion. And then the remaining five, um, John Rex Elementary, Columbus at Jackson Elementary, Rogers Middle School, Emerson Alternative School, and the Phase Two of Class and SAS are still in construction. As far as I-89 bond projects, uh, there are 16 still in construction. These are gyms and classrooms at West Nichols Hills, Parmalee, Hillcrest, Pierce, Adams, Bodine, Horseman, Kaiser, Mark Twain, Putnam Heights, Southern Hill, Stan Wadey, Buchanan, Gatewood, Johnson, and Oak Ridge, all elementary schools. And construction is still ongoing at both Taft and Spiegel Stadiums. Uh, we do not have any items for the next meeting, so we, we will uh, propose to cancel the meeting on April 15th. Our next trust meeting would be on Tuesday, May the 6th. Okay, sounds great. Uh, your monthly report is in your packet. Um, I don't know if we have anything to add from ADG. Nope. Okay. All right. Uh, if not, item number nine is comments from trustees. Yes, sir. Um, if I may ask Mr. Lopez, um, just reading about the potential plan for um, additional South Side School uh, facilities um, with some leftover bond money. Um, if you would kind of discuss kind of, and I know it's preliminary at this point, sure. what those plans may be, the timing of them, and if this trust would have administration of those funds and the office would administer the projects. Thanks, great question. And uh, we have looked at various alternatives to try to uh, relieve the overcrowding. Uh, it appears that we'll be able to do some of that at the elementary schools with uh, primarily through portables and redistricting. 
uh, where a contiguous uh, school may not have the uh, or may have the capacity to take some overflow. So there, I think we're we're in pretty good shape. Uh, it becomes much more severe at the secondary level, and particularly at the high schools. We have at uh, U.S. Grant 25 teachers that don't have a classroom, which means they're hopping around wherever there's available classroom, whereas another teacher that has an off period for planning and like, that means also those teachers that are having their planning period then have to go find space anywhere else. So it creates a real uh, handicap for instruction. At U.S. Grant, it's uh, almost as bad with about uh, 20 uh, teachers that are roaming around. So. Uh, much less than ideal, and our numbers are likely to grow next year. One of the proposals that uh, we met with the, uh, we had a town hall meeting at U.S. Grant last week, was to think about uh, for a couple of years' time till we can get some construction done of um, relocating some of those feeder patterns to where they come to Northwest Classen and Douglas. It was not well received, just probably an understatement, uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, so we're looking at other options that would include portables. That seems to be much more uh, feasible to the community than, than uh, the busing that was suggested. In addition to that, though, uh, more specific to your question, is that it's obvious we're going to need to build some classrooms uh, at U.S. Grant and Capitol Hill, at least until another bond issue gets passed. My reference to how we might go about that is to start the construction now instead of having a, maybe a four-year horizon where you pass the bond issues, start planning, design, then construction. Uh, so to see how quickly we can do that uh, with some unallocated 2007 bond issue money. Uh, it's undecided as to whether the district has a capacity to do that on our own or whether we'd look to the city again to help us. Uh, but there was a lot of discussion last night at the city, at, the, uh, at our board meeting regarding our relationship with Master Trust and that causes a little additional cloud as to what our future might be. Uh, but we're trying to, to explore a variety of things short of uh, busing some of the students uh, because of the reaction both from the students as well as the parents. We will still have two other town hall meetings at uh, Northwest Classroom, which had been one of the receiving schools, and at Douglas High School as well, too, just so we continue to explore what options are there for the future because to me it's pretty apparent that the district will need to have a bond issue in place uh, probably by this time next year. Uh, and that it should contemplate probably the construction of at least one high school on the south side, uh, probably one middle school, and in my mind at least three elementary schools. Uh, beyond that we have technology needs and other things too, so uh, the time is there. But again, we're hopeful that that unallocated uh, bond money we identified earlier in the year to the school board, it's about uh, $29 million, that that will let us kind of jump start some of the construction at the two high schools. Thank you. And I would just point out, you know, that it's certainly understandable that everyone wants to go to U.S. Grant High School. Um, Here we go. But, but everyone is unable to. Here we go. <laughs> I sense there's a general in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Same here, Thank Mr. You. Lopez. Two. Oh, two. Oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I knew there was somebody from Capitol Hill. But okay, thank you. We have proud alumni, and, I'm, and we're proud of those alumni. Thank absolutely. You. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Thank you, Anthony. Appreciate the question. Any other questions or comments from trustees, staff, citizens? Ms. Parks, very nice to see you here today. All right. If not, we're adjourned. Thank you.